Hey everyone, I'm Pete Lewis. I'm the quality control manager here at SparkFun. Uh, me and my team make all the test fixtures for production. This is the SparkFun Pi AVR programmer hat. And uh, me and my team actually developed this product uh, for production. It's an easy way to use a Raspberry Pi to program AVR targets. So this hat mates with the standard uh, two by 20 header that you find on all the Raspberry Pis. You can actually plug this into any of the varieties of the Raspberry Pis. Uh, for my example later, I'm gonna use a Raspberry Pi 3B+. As you can see here, uh, from the SPI hardware lines, it actually hits some logic level conversion. Um, and that's handy because a lot of times your target might be 3.3 volts or 5 volts. And the Raspberry Pi GPIO are only supposed to ever see 3.3, so we put this logic level conversion in place to protect them. And then right here we have the isolation uh, switch, and this actually isolates the Raspberry Pi's um, pins from the target, and so we can control that with software, and right before programming we can connect those lines, and then do some programming, and then at the end of that we can disconnect those lines. Um, and then at that point, all of your um, SPI lines on the target are actually free to do whatever they want to do. On the left side of the board, we have uh, a couple white boxes here where you can write your project name or the version date, etc., of whatever hex files on your programmer. We use these in production to uh, keep track of which Raspberry Pis for programming which product. Um, and then we have some LEDs that indicate the status of various stages of programming. So a lot of times when you first program an AVR, you'll need to set the fuse bits and then program the flash. Um, in this case, it's usually the bootloader if you're gonna do some Arduino programming, um, and then set the lock bits. And so, and the last one is a serial upload if you are gonna do some serial uploading of code over a COM port. Um, there's a success and fail LED for each of those stages. So the Python script that's running on the Raspberry Pi will analyze the debug messages from AVR Dude and then light up the LED if everything went right. Um, there's also a tap to program, little CapSense pad right here on the bottom left. This is using the um, AT42Q1010 CapSense IC. And so essentially this will engage programming if you're using it in standalone mode pretty handy because it doesn't have any mechanical switches and should never fail for you. And then lastly, there's a shutdown button here um, that we use to shut down the Raspberry Pi when you're done using it for programming. Uh, the last thing I should mention too is um, to control this logic level conversion up here on the top right, there's actually some jumpers that you can set. Um, and you can have the target itself provide the target side logic level you can have the Raspberry Pi provide either 3.3 or 5 volts for that logic level conversion. So for the actual connections to the target um, after the isolation switch, we've got your standard SPI lines. Um, this hits a right angle SMD header that then hits a 1x6 jumper cable. And then at the end of that, we actually have a little adapter that we also designed that brings it to the standard 3x2 AVR footprint. Most uh, Arduino boards have this 3x2 ISP lines for in-circuit programming, and so that will mate directly with whatever board you need to plug into. So there's a pretty interesting story behind the design of this product. Um, in production, we do a lot of AVR programming, and so before this, we were actually using the AVR MK2, and uh, we started using this in about 2005, way back in the day. Eventually, there was more and more problems with the Windows drivers and the support for this sort of waned. It still works, but usually it takes a lot of finagling to get it to work for production in our way. Um, there's another one out now, the Atmel Ice, and we thought about upgrading to that, but we really wanted to make our own in-house solution that we could fully support. Um, so first of all, I actually looked at the um, AVR Pocket Programmer. And this guy is a nifty little programmer, but it has some limitations that didn't allow us to use it in production. Uh, one thing is that it has a file size limitation, so we need to be able to program any size hex file for all the variety of products we program in production. And then also, once you get up to a certain speed, like we like to program at about two megahertz on everything, um, it becomes a little bit less reliable. Um, there was also the tiny programmer as an option, but again, this has some limitations on 
file size that it can use um, to program targets. So um, ultimately we decided to go our own route and base the whole thing off of a Raspberry Pi um, and use the built-in SPI hardware that's in the Raspberry Pi. This guy became the final solution and it allowed us to have a completely standalone unit that would never get automatic updates. So now let's hop into some examples on how we could use this. For the first example, I have this set up in standalone mode and I'm programming the OptiBoot bootloader onto my breadboard and then doing a serial upload of Blink. So to engage programming in standalone mode, I simply just tap on this CapSense pad. Woohoo, all greens. For the second example, I'm gonna show a serial upload directly from the Arduino IDE. And this is actually how most people program their Arduinos with the OptiBoot. Um, I wrote a sketch called the Serial Hog, and it is a massive sketch with a ton of serial prints. And it essentially eats up about 60% of the Arduino's memory. And so to program that, I just hit this upload button and I wanted to show as an example how long it can take to do a serial upload within the IDE. And so as you can see, this little writing bar is taking its sweet time. That was about 6.3 seconds to write it. And then another 6.88 seconds to verify. Um, we are gonna do the same programming using the PyAVR programmer hat and show just how fast it can go. So for the third example, I'm actually gonna use this directly from the command line, and I'm gonna call AVR Dude to do the programming. First, I enable the switch, so I'm connected to the target, and then I call AVR Dude. And as you can see here, it's quite zippy. It took 1.6 seconds to program and 0.7 seconds to verify. And we are programming at two megahertz. And this is just how we do it down in production. So if you're interested in doing some AVR programming directly from your Raspberry Pi with a robust and very fast solution, um, check out the SparkFun Pi AVR programmer hat, sparkfun.com. I tend to forget to breathe. Check out the pipe. Such a mouthful to say. So if you're interested in just called the tiny programmer. This thing just hit me in the face. As you can see, the fuse bits failed. So I'm interested to know what's going on here. Yeah. You're interested in getting smacked in the face by your electronics.